Hi, this is Craig, the technical manager at QNAP UK. Uh, today we wanted to do a quick uh, sort of demonstration of the TS-H2490 FU unit. Um, this unit does come, uh, the particular one I have has four 25 gig connections. And I just wanted to show you a quick setup here just to demonstrate the performance of the unit. Um, this will be the first one we've actually done any sort of uh, editing on with cuts and rejoins. Um, there's gonna be quite a bit of changing. So the first part of this is gonna be me showing you the environment. Uh, of what I'm doing the test setup on. Um, then I'll cut to me testing the 25 gig uh, throughputs. Um, and then I'm going to um, have to come back again after I change all the network adapters out from 25 gig uh, to 10 gig on the same NAS, uh, just to illustrate exactly what throughput you can get um, by using 25 gig networking uh, with some DAC cables. Um, it's very uh, cost friendly. Uh, to do it with DAC cables. Um, if you start introducing 25 gig Ethernet switches, that's another story. Um, but uh, I, I'm going to show you how it's going to work in a simple two node uh, VMware setup here. So first and foremost, I've got um, ESXi 7 running here. And if I go across the, the top here, I can show you the hardware I'm running it on. Um, so these are just two small uh, HP micro servers. I think we got them for about 600 pounds each. Um, we've upgraded the RAM on them, but Ultimately, um, they're bog standard. We've got no storage actually internally on the servers. Everything's run from the QNAPs directly. So we can see here um, the processors match between the two. So they're both on Intel Xeon. So if I switch between the two hosts here, if we go across to the memory, the, the first server here has got 64 gigs of RAM. Uh, the second server over here, uh, if I go to the memory tab, has 32 gigs of RAM. And both units currently have one of our 25 gig um, cards added into it. Um, so we've got the SFP28 connection and we can see here I've got two ports connected. One of the ports goes directly between the two hosts. So this helps with things like uh, vMotion. So if you're running a VM and you want to move it from one, one of your um, hosts to another host, it can go over the 25 gig link. Um, most happen in a blink of an eye with 25 gig. It's very, very fast. Uh, not that it's slow over 10 gig either, but it's, it's a very quick way to do it. Um, and if I go across to the other one, and show you the network interface there. We've got the same setup here. So I've just changed the IP addresses around to make everything work. Uh, the other network port of each one um, goes to one of the um, 25 gig ports on the back of the NAS. So if I go across to the NAS, so we can see here, if I go to the network and virtual switch, we can see how it's set up. So I'm only actually utilizing um, two of the 25 gig interfaces. So if I go down to interfaces here, um, I've got the 2.5 gig connected just as a management interface. So I'm not gonna do any data transfers over that. That's just for me to get into these this web interface screen. But as we scroll down, we can see one is set up as 10.10.10.1 and the other is set up as 10.10.20.1. And this references the IP addresses on the servers. So 10.10.10.2 and 10.10.20.2 so that they can communicate directly. And the, the two servers are on a, a 10.0.0.1 and a 10.0.0.2 between each other for the vMotion tasks. Um, so the way the environment is set up is a TSH2490. If I go into the storage and snapshots, we'll be able to see all the disks that we've got added in there. So let's wait for that to load up here. So this has got uh, 24 um, U.2 uh, WD drives added into it, uh, the SN640s. So we've got absolutely loads of SSDs, loads of capacity available here. I've just added all of the drives together into one large storage pool. So here in the one large storage pool that I've got there, I've got all the drives added into it in one go um, in a very large RAID 50. Um, so we're gonna just wait for that to load here and we can scroll down through all of those different options. So we'll maximize it. So there we go. We've got a couple of sub arrays there just within to, to create the RAID 50 setup. Um, so within that, I do have let me just close that down. So in that I do have a few different volumes. So I've got an iSCSI volume mapped into the VMware environment. And I've also got an NFS data store mapped in as well. Um, so these are the two primary ones that I'm using for the VMware setup. So all the VMs that I've got hosted over here in VMware are hosted on those. So if I click over on hosts and clusters, uh, we can see in each individual um, VM. So if I click on to say the QCenter VM and scroll down, that's on the H2490 on iSCSI. And as we scroll through the different ones, we can see that most of them are over here um, on the H2490 iSCSI volume. Um, so that's how the, the main volume is set up. When we click onto each of the hosts, we can see the network configuration. So if I scroll down here, we can see uh, VM NIC 4 and 5 at the 25 gig links. And I've just got them mapped to where they need to for the VMware configuration I've got set up. 
Uh, so VM NIC5 on each server is actually the one that does the vMotion between the two servers. Um, and the VM NIC4 is what I'm using for um, interaction between the, the server itself and the NAS directly. Um, so there's no actual switches involved, even though it says vSwitch there. If we have a look at the vSwitch setup here, um, so I've got the uh, vSwitch 0 is the main switch that I'm using just on the gigabit link. Um, so I've only got one of the 1 gig LAN ports on board on these servers connected just for management purposes. As we scroll through the different switches, we can see vSwitch 1 there. Uh, this is um, uh, primarily for, oh, let me look at the second one, that's what I'm doing the testing on. So in the vSwitches here, uh, so vSwitch 1 is uh, basically for the vMotion, that's between the two servers themselves, so that goes directly from um, server 1 to server 2, so that's a dedicated um, uh, DAC cable directly between the two servers. As we scroll down further, we've got a vSwitch 2. vSwitch 2 is what's actually uh, from the server itself to the NAS. So that's how I'm going to do the testing here. So we can see here we've got the full 25 gig connection set up on the 10.10.20.2 setup. Um, so that's how I'm going to do the setup here. So uh, we're going to take a, a quick cut now. So I'm going to go off and set up the quick testing environment so that I can set up a, a little Ubuntu VM that's running. Um, so that's the Ubuntu One VM I've got over here uh, that's running on this second host. So if I was just to show you that. Uh, so if we go down here, ESXi host 2 is where this one's running. And I've got two networks added to it. Uh, VM network is so that the VM gets internet access through the one gig interface on the server. And VM network 2 is the one that I've got mapped through to the 25 gig that goes direct um, between the server um, and the NAS 25 gig port. So we'll just take a quick cut and then we'll come back once I've got the uh, the VM loaded up and the test environment set up and I'll explain how the test environment set up as well. Okay, so here's the uh, the testing methodology that I've got set up. Um, I'm going to use a piece of software that's called um, iPerf3 um, to do the testing. So first of all, what I've done is I've enabled SSH on the NAS uh, just temporarily so that I can uh, log in at the command line to run the iPerf3 testing because it is a command line tool. Um, so within um, uh, the NAS, go to the control panel network and file services and then Telnet and SSH and just get that enabled. So once that's enabled, I've actually already added in a app that you can find if you do a Google search. So you'll see there is actually an orange um, exclamation mark saying there is no digital signature. Um, this isn't a supported app, um, iPerf3. It was made by the community. Um, I'm just using it uh, to allow me to run the iPerf3 um, testing uh, uh, set up the benchmark software so that we can do a network bandwidth test. It gives much more real-time updates and results, lots more information um, than any dashboards that we have anywhere else. Um, so this is what I've got running, so I've got that open. So while it's an app that's showing there, it's, it's just enabling a service in the background. Clicking open does nothing. Um, it doesn't open up an app, a nice graphical screen or anything like that. So to actually utilize it, uh, you do have to go to the command line of the NAS. So that's what I've got here. Um, I've SSH'd um, into the NAS so we can see there at the top. Um, I'm connected to 192.168.50.138, which matches the NAS config IP address here. So I'm just connecting in over the one gig interface, uh, but I'm gonna set up a transfer to happen through the other interface. So when we see here the 10.10.20.45, uh, from the first part of the video, that's uh, that 10.10.20 range is what we've got assigned uh, to one of the 25 gig NICs. Um, so to connect into it, um, I've got a, uh, a, a virtual machine fired up. So I've got this Ubuntu uh, virtual machine fired up. So if I remotely connect into that, we can see here I've got this one set up on its second NIC port to 10.10.20.45. Um, so all we need to do now is effectively use this machine. Um, now, even though it's showing um, a 10,000 megabits per second, which is 10 gig Ethernet connection, that's just the way VMware shows it with the VMX Net 3 connection. It always shows to the operating system it's a 10 gig connection, uh, but you're going to see speeds in uh, far in excess of this, um, over double what this is showing. Um, so this is really just so the OS knows what it is, but VMware will allow you to exceed these numbers here. So if we close out of that, um, we'll open up here a, um, a terminal window here within the Ubuntu system. And what we're going to do here is run the iPerf3 server, which is simply iPerf3-s. You obviously have to have iPerf installed here. Um, and that's now going to be listening. It's listening on all the network interfaces, but the only one we're concentrating on um, is the 25 gig one. So the next step is to open up the terminal window here so that we can see both windows next to each other and um, so that we can see the bandwidth that we're going to get. Um, so here I've run iperf3-c and I've typed in the IP address of this virtual machine. So this is basically telling 
um, the NAS to test on this IP address, which the NAS will automatically know that's the 25 gig one, and it's going to come in and connect on the default port of 5201. So when I push enter here, it will go off and run a 10 second test. So we can see here the 10 second test is running and we're getting just under the full 25 gig a second there. Um, so it's a very, very uh, massive amount of data that just transferred. So it's sent 27.1. So that's the big benefit that you can get with something like the 25 gig adapters using it with a NAS that's capable of driving it. Um, so with the TSH2490FU, um, it's obviously an all flash array um, and it's got absolute bandwidth in spades for you to be able to get these types of performance. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut the video off and I'm going to run this exact same test again, ideally with all the same IP addresses and everything. I'm just going to take out the uh, the 25 gig cards out the servers um, and then I'm going to swap it over. Uh, the servers only have a single PCIe slot so I can't have both in at the same time. So I'm just going to swap everything over from the 25 gig SFP28 DAC connected solution that I've got set up now. I'm going to add a 10 gig card into the uh, 2490. I'm going to add a 10 gig card into this server. Um, and then I'm going to run the same test again once I reconfigure everything, just so that you can see the absolute massive difference uh, between the 10 gig and the 25 gig on a unit. So we're trying to keep everything exactly the same. Uh, the only thing that will change is the network cards we're using. We're going to switch out the 25s to the 10s. It will be the same NAS in use. Um, everything else will be absolutely the same in the setup. So we'll come back to you in a minute. Okay, so now here's a quick summary of the uh, the VMware environment. Now I've switched it over to 10 gig. So I've switched out the cards to some of our 10 gig cards into the servers. Uh, so I've got there a 10 gig link created on my vSwitch 0 um, on the host 2. If I go check out my um, Ubuntu uh, uh, virtual machine here, we'll go into it. Um, so I've got the exact same thing set up here. So here's a little test I already did, but I can run that live for you in a moment. Um, so I've had to just change the IP addresses around a little bit just because it's the nature of switching different network types. I'm not doing direct connects anymore. I'm able to go through a 10 gig switch. So here I've got the command on the right, which is me um, connected into the NAS. Um, and on the right, uh, sorry, on the left, I've got the uh, Ubuntu uh, server running there with the iPerf3. So if I push enter on this, it's going to run off and do the transfer. Um, so obviously I've now changed it from 25 gig to 10 gig. So we're seeing there we've got just about 9.4 uh, gigabits a second. Um, so we can see there that we transferred about uh, 11 gig in that same 10 second test uh, that we ran on 25 gig. Um, so that's all to the exact same NAS. So it's still to the TS-H2490 with all those WD um, uh, SN 640 drives in there so it's a very very um, uh, fast NAS but even if you go with the 10 gig it's still very fast it's just with the 25 gig uh, the 10 gig and 25 gig cards are very similar in price but it generally would only work out if you needed to do direct connection between a couple of hosts a couple of servers um, you know, anything more than a couple you're probably going to want switching and that's where 10 gig becomes a bit more attractive because the, the switch is uh, are much more reasonably priced Okay, so any questions whatsoever, please uh, please comment down below and we'll try to answer them as quick as possible. Uh, but 25 gig networking, definitely good for certain situations. And the TSH2490, um, I'm not able to push it with the hardware I've got. Um, you would need quite a lot of, uh, of power to, uh, to try and get the most out of multiple 25 gig connections, which is just something um, we're not equipped to do here. Okay, thanks a lot for watching.